Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we have an absolutely serious story out of the Nashville area where a young man was recently arrested for an armed carjacking where he fired shots upon the vehicle that he was carjacking and shots in the air, but that is only the half of it because it turns out that this individual recently got away with murder. Not two months ago, he was able to plead down on a homicide charge to a sentence of just probation, and again, he is out on the streets attacking people again two months after said plea deal, and his mugshot is absolutely disgusting. You can see his smiling face, and to make matters worse, according to the mother, this is an illegal immigrant from Honduras who should have never been in this country in the first place and should have been deported post his conviction via that plea deal. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. I will also remind you that on Wednesday, October 23rd, I will be live debating in person at the Sovereign House in Lower Manhattan. Registration to attend is free. I'd love for you guys to be there. Link in the top of the description for that registration. A multi-county chase ends with two teens behind bars, but it wasn't until their names were released that a Nashville mother was left shocked. That's because one of the suspects is one she knows well. So I first stumbled across this story via this local news segment where they give you this intro where they say the mother was absolutely absolutely shocked, horrified by the fact that this criminal who ended up contributing to the death of her daughter was convicted of criminally negligent homicide was rearrested again. And I'm going to tell you because I found another interview with this woman that this is completely false. She was not shocked at all. In fact, she warned the district attorney's office repeatedly that this guy would reoffend, but they decided not to do anything about it. Dear Leah, you were such an amazing friend and person to me. I honestly can't wait to see you again. Tonight, they're the words that keep Natalie Chastain going. I love you so much. After her 13-year-old daughter, Aaliyah, left home late one night. By morning, when she never returned, Natalie knew something was wrong. Aaliyah was found here. So right here, you have a mother who lost her young daughter, age 13, obviously a beautiful kid, after she snuck out of the house and ended up in a stolen vehicle, and by the way, ended up underneath the stolen vehicle, as we will find out a little bit later, and they discuss the fact that she ended up in a creek. Now, of course, they don't tell you the details of this particular case. They don't tell you that the suspect in this new arrest, from the previous arrest, from the death of her daughter, actually dragged her body in 19 degree weather and dumped her in the creek all but assuring that this girl would die from her injuries related to an accident they just show you the mother and she says the obvious which is probation is not appropriate for a crime like this how can a violent crime be given probation it just it just should never have even happened but it's what happened behind closed doors in the courtroom that has her on edge tonight i knew it i knew it would be a matter of time before he messed up again. Eduardo Panada was one of two teens charged in Elias' death. Back in August, Panada appeared in juvenile court, agreeing to plead guilty to criminally negligent homicide as an adult. His sentence, according to court records, three years of supervised probation. Now look, I know people listen to this show via podcast, so I want to make something 100% clear. They're showing his mugshot, and this guy is smiling. Somebody who is reportedly, according to the mother, an illegal immigrant from Honduras who killed her 13-year-old daughter via a car theft and crime crazy driving after being arrested for carjacking and crazy driving and being pursued by the police is smiling in his mugshot. And just to be 100% clear, if you go to this guy's Nashville criminal records, what you will discover is that the plea deal where he got three years of probation for the death of this 13 year old girl was only in August. So two months later, he's back on the streets committing the very same exact crime right in front of your faces. And when he gets arrested, he smiles about it. It is like a slap in the face to see him back out here after he's killed my daughter, knowing that he has he had another chance to kill someone else. And who's to say that he doesn't get out again and, and does? 
Less than two months later, he was arrested for carjacking. This past Friday, Pinata reportedly stole a car at gunpoint. During the robbery, police say he approached the car, firing a shot into the SUV and in the air. But police say the crime didn't end there. Mount Juliet license plate readers caught the stolen car and a chase began before the suspects eventually crashed. Pinata and two others in the car with him continued to run on foot before being captured. Now, the mother right here is saying that it's absolutely horrific, obviously, that this person got out on probation for killing her daughter. And then a couple of months later, he is back out on the streets again, committing the very same crime, an armed carjacking that could have led to the death of an individual. And again, I will remind you in this particular case he discharged a weapon according to the reporting from what i can glean from it into the vehicle and in the air in order to steal this rav4 then he led police on a lengthy police chase ended up crashing that vehicle as well in a crime that rings extraordinarily similar to the initial crime that he committed that ended up leading to the death of this girl that's why he's smiling in his mugshot he's gotten away with a murder and now here he is carjacking people at the end of the day, he doesn't care because there were no repercussions. So the mother right here is dead on accurate in her assessment of this particular situation. She's highlighting the fact that he's smiling, laughing it up, laughing at our system. And honestly, our system is laughable if we allow people to break our laws to get into this country, break our laws to steal vehicles, kill somebody, kill an American citizen, a child, a girl, and then we end up saying, you know what, probation, first time offense, here's a nice little slap on the wrist, hope you have fun committing your next crime, and then two months later, he spits right in the face of the American judicial system and commits that other crime. But I really want you guys to understand that this local news segment cuts out a lot of information about the initial homicide, cuts off a lot of what this mother has to say, so we're actually going to go to a radio interview or at least something that looks like a radio interview that's posted on youtube.com so you can hear this mother in her own words describe what this guy got away with because you need to be infuriated by this you need to ask the nashville district attorney's office what the hell is going on why they gave him this sweetheart deal and why this supposedly illegal immigrant from honduras is allowed in this country allowed to remain in this country if his immigration status as reported by the mother is true. Which is why your focus is now on the future, hoping no other family goes through a fraction of what she has. Pray that another person doesn't die from, from a decision to let him out. So again, in this local news segment, they paint the mom as the grieving mother who just doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. But I need to make something 100% clear to everybody out there in the audience. I've listened to the lengthier interview that this woman has given, and she's not just a grieving mother who doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. She's a grieving mother who demands justice for her daughter. She demands consequences for the actions, and as a side benefit of that, that should allow this to not happen to somebody else not only in this country but with this particular individual she's worried that this guy is going to get another slap on the wrist because not only is that what he got in this particular case but she's essentially been blackballed by the district attorney's office in terms of information about what happened to her daughter so we're going to go over this radio interview i want you to listen to what she knows i want you to listen to how horrible this eduardo pineta actually is because there's every reason to believe had he acted differently had he shown any concern for human life at all whatsoever that her daughter would still be alive that her daughter would be injured for sure but would be okay on her way to recovery and we'd be having a completely different conversation what happened three days before thanksgiving back in 2022 um really it was just very not normal of the situation that happened was really not normal with my daughter. Um, one of her friends asked her to come out of the house at nighttime, which was a girl. Um, and my daughter came out, got in the car, and they left. They were, I guess, supposed to be riding around. Um, she wasn't supposed to have left my house. Um, well, I wake up the next morning. This is after I've gone to bed. Wake up the next morning, my daughter's not here. Um, well, frantically, I start searching and I have all logins to her phone, her social media, things of that nature. And I come across the conversation between one of her and another girl where it that showed that she was coming to pick my daughter up. Well, apparently Eduardo um, 
was a driver of a of a vehicle that night, and that car was stolen. Um, somehow, I do not have the full story because no one has told the truth this whole time, so I really cannot explain to you how my daughter actually died. I just have what the police are, are trying to piece together to tell me. Um, my daughter was ran over with a stolen car, um, which the car that she was hit with hit a house. So right now, I think it's very important for you guys to understand the similarities with this particular case and the previous case. So what we have in common, stolen car, reckless driving. By the way, teenage girls were involved. There was actually a teenage girl in the vehicle with Edward Panetta in this particular arrest, as well as another teenager, a 17-year-old. So already we have a stolen car situation, possible carjacking situation, willful disregard for or human life situation and again i need to add reckless driving as well because both vehicles ended up being crashed up by the end of this whole ordeal so we have a very similar pattern of behavior the exact same behavior this should have been prevented this should have been foreseen by the district attorney and this is the reason why we incapacitate criminals this is the reason why we deport illegal immigrant criminals again if what we're hearing about this guy's immigration status is true um eduardo tried to pull her out from underneath the car she was not into obviously she was outside the vehicle and he was driving um she was stuck underneath the car so he pulled her as hard as he could and it dislocated her shoulders um we drug her down a street uh about a third of a mile and on the left on the right hand side of the road it's a hill that has a creek in it he decided to drag her and lay her in a creek but he had pulled her so hard that she came out of her clothes, her shirt, and her jacket that she had on. Mm. So she was laying out there with just pants on and water in 18 degrees. Yeah. So as you just heard from the mother in this particular incident, you have the stolen car. The stolen car is being driven completely recklessly. It crashes into a house. The girl ends up being stuck underneath the vehicle. And Eduardo, rather than calling 911, rather than leaving her there in order to save himself, decides that it's a good idea to drag her lifeless body. By the way, she was still alive in this scenario, as you're going to find out away from the scene, dislocating her shoulder and dumping her down a hill in a creek that made it incredibly difficult for her to be found. Now, she says it was 19 degrees. It's important for you guys to understand that this was actually in November of 2022, a couple of days before Thanksgiving. Little did this mother know that her daughter would not be joining her for said Thanksgiving because she was ditched in a creek after being really banged up in a car accident. And to make matters worse, she was left in a creek completely Completely topless. Again, we're talking about a 13-year-old girl that was killed in this particular scenario, and this illegal immigrant, rather than actually leaving her at the scene where she could be rescued, ends up dumping her in the creek like she doesn't matter, like she's trash. And unfortunately, the Nashville District Attorney's Office ended up agreeing with his assessment because they ended up giving him probation for this. But again, it gets worse. So... Um, the people of the house that that stolen car hit called 911 and stated that they saw someone dragging someone away down the street. Well, the police showed up 10 minutes after that call was made. Um, my daughter's still laying on the side of the road. The police passed her on the way up. Um, they did talk to the people at the house did they report so yeah like she said the homeowners actually witnessed the dragging away of this girl from the scene of the crime they reported it to police and the police ended up unfortunately passing by the creek where she was dumped in on their way up to the scene of the accident and this is why they weren't able to find her and rescue her in time so we have a situation where this accident happens it's absolutely devastating the girl is seriously injured in said accident but there is a chance that she can live but one of the things that doesn't help her live is dumping her in a stream again in 19 degree weather in the middle of the evening where she's incredibly difficult to see down a hill which is exactly what eduardo did and remember he got three years probation for this no jail time no prison time it was considered a first offense he's an innocent little baby illegal immigrant and even though it was perfectly legal to charge the then 16 year old as an adult he was still able to secure this sweetheart deal somehow my daughter was able to get herself out of the creek 
and crawl down the hill to the next closest house there was. So she knocked on the door and laid down on the porch after realizing that nobody was going to answer the door for her. Mm. Um, she laid down and ultimately died. So one of the reasons why I'm coming down very hard on Eduardo Pineda in this particular case is because of facts and details like that. Now, the local news says she was found in the creek. It turns out that's not the case. She was able to drag herself up from this creek, go to a neighboring home or the closest home that she could find, knock on the door, try to get the attention of the homeowners, but they weren't home or they didn't hear her. It was obviously late in the morning. So she ends up laying down on the porch, again, soaking wet from the creek freezing due to the fact that it's 19 degrees and she has no shirt and no jacket on and at that moment in time she ends up dying she, she ends up being able to fight being able to struggle enough to get herself up from the creek ask for help one last time and she ends up passing away right there that's what happened to this woman's daughter and again when i talk about survivability of the accident this is exactly what i'm referring to i have every reason to believe that this girl could have been saved her life could have been salvaged but eduardo took away any chance of that being possible when he decided to try to save himself from the consequences of his actions so remember the smirk in his mugshot after being re-arrested for an armed carjacking where he put yet another person's life in danger for a vehicle and additional people in danger by driving recklessly and crashing up that vehicle. Just remember that this is the person that we decided to not deport. This is the person that we decided to keep in this great nation. And this story is not getting the attention that it deserves. And it's really unfortunate that it's not. Number one, uh, who told you that he was illegal? The DA. So the DA or the DA's office, was it Glenn Funk or was it the uh, just the DA's uh, office? The DA's office um, in Juvenile it was Lindsey Moreland. And so they told you that he is an illegal from Honduras and he was charged with a homicide and the death of your daughter. They gave mm -hmm. him probation for three years. And yeah. lo and behold, I don't know when you saw the mugshot, but over the weekend uh, I shared it. Some, o some others mm -hmm. shared it as well. <clears throat> it must have been quite a shock when you saw his smirking face. Yeah. Um, like he just didn't have a care in the world and he knew that he was going to beat this just like he, he beat the uh, charges in the death of your daughter. Yeah, he smiled in almost every court date except for this last one where he needed to show to seem like he was sad. He even pulled tears in that in that courtroom. And I don't understand how he did that. But to, to this day, no one involved got to actually hear all of the injuries my daughter got from this because they gave him a plea deal. Do you feel like so they have uh, no idea? <laughs> do you feel like the uh, DA's office? Do they feel like? Do you feel like they did right by your daughter? No, of course not. No. If if the shoe was on the other foot, nobody would be okay with probation. Right? Nobody. Probation for killing your child. Nonetheless, that's my only child. Now, the mother says she was told by the district attorney's office that he was an illegal immigrant and that she really didn't have to worry about the ultralight sentence because this guy was going to be picked up by immigration. And he was warned several times throughout the proceedings that immigration was going to come for him. But guess what? They never came. They never showed up. Kamala Harris's open border allowed this guy into this country, according to what the mother is saying. Not an illegal. He's from Honduras. And he was charged as an adult in the death of your daughter. Mm -hmm. What happened to immigration? I mean, did they not have any kind of a, I don't know, interest in this case? Well, apparently they did. They did have an interest in the case because they kept, uh, we kept having to postpone the last court date because they were needing to make sure Eduardo understood the consequences of immigration because they were already coming looking for him, like looking for him because of this situation. I was even told that immigration would be picking him up once he once he was signed over into the adult system. That never happened, because here we are. And guess what? The consequences of that were the destruction of her family. Her daughter is her only child, and she was ripped away from her for what? And what's the consequences for that? next to nothing and now other people in this particular area are going to have to suffer because obviously this guy wasn't rehabilitated he wasn't an innocent baby angel aladdin who just wanted to uh, feed his starving family by ditching a body in the creek he's a scumbag he's a scumbag that enjoys inflicting pain he's a scumbag that puts his own self-gratification before anything and he mocks our justice system with all his smiling mugshots each and every day he needs to be deported
deported immediately if he's an illegal alien. And if not, he needs a significant sentence, more than three years probation, just to start with. Look, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. A lot of times when people talk about horrific crimes that were committed in this nation, we have to realize that in the context of 300 plus million people in our great nation, that this is not that unusual. And a lot of times that there's nothing that can be done to prevent it. But the fact of the matter is, here, there is something that couldn't be done. There is something that could have prevented not just the murder of the initial case, but this additional crime, this additional carjacking that could have easily led to the death of another. And that is enforcement of our laws. If we enforced our border laws, Eduardo would not have been in the country again, according to what the mother says about his immigration status. But in addition to that, if we took murder, if we took a homicide, if we took dragging a girl's body away from a scene where she could have been rescued and ditching her for your own personal protection as seriously as we should have taken it, then guess what? This guy would not be out to reoffend again, and he would not be gracing our local news with smiling mugshots mocking our entire system. But guess what? We didn't let that happen. We didn't do the right thing in this particular case, and now the people of Nashville have to suffer the consequences. Now, of course, I'm going to leave this open to all of you guys out there in the audience. I want to know what you guys think about this particular case and about the fact that there's also the illegal immigrant element of this particular case. As per usual, if you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute madness of our criminal justice system yet again. Till next time.